It's called the Corsa and it's the sixth generation F with the first five being A, B, C, D and E. It's a four-door hatch that's shaped like a sandal and it has a cylinder missing from its engine and it was born in Germany, adopted by French parents who chose to raise it in Spain. But here's the thing, if you're interested in owning one of these, chances are you don't really care about anything I just said. It's a continental hot hatch from a brand that you have never really paid that much attention to. The low-profile guy from another team in a different department. It's got more shape definition and looks better than its set predecessors, but still, not something that's going to make you go, wow, look, a Corsa. It definitely lives up to its name as a hot hatch, but I actually think this car would look much better if it were a coupe. It's got an impressive list of gadgets as well. And all of that crammed into this Mini that weighs slightly over a thousand kilos. And behold, I have found the Peugeot. As you'd expect, the interior is lined with tons of plastic, but it still looks pretty decent. I'll give them an A for effort for the double digital screen displays. This screen looks cool. This screen looks like it was stolen from another car. And yes, it is digital, but straight up, it looks cheap, like a Pentium 1 processor. I think where this car really shines is the drive. In fact, the next thing that's going to catch your attention after the Pentium 1 display is how punchy this engine is. I will admit, a 1.2-litre three-cylinder engine does sound disgusting. But when it's paired with a turbocharger and an 8-speed gearbox with pedals, the results will shock you. Forget the power and the top figures, those are just paper stats. I think what's really important is how the car makes you feel. And this car feels like it just took a shot of coke. The other thing you're going to realise is how small this car really is. And when I say small, I mean it in the best sense of the word. I drive a tank. So when I got into this car, the culture shock I felt was exaggerated. I literally started throwing this into corners and squeezing this through the tightest gaps, only to realize that I still have a lot of clearance. I'm warning you, the ride is stiff and bumpy, but the handling is really good. Punchy engine, extremely small, light and nimble, responsive gearbox with really good cornering capabilities. What we have here, my friends, are the raw ingredients needed to cook up the perfect hot hatch. And you get all the benefits of a light car with a small engine, like, I don't know, low petrol consumption, low engine maintenance, uh, lesser wear of your tyres, not having to give colleagues lift. Basically, all the things that matter. If you are still clueless on why I feel this car is very satisfying, let me put it in simpler terms for you. I am very confident that this car would win a race against the Ferrari 458 if the race were to start at the top of the car park of Shaw Towers and end on the top of the Golden Mile Tower, multi-storey car park, on the eve of National Day. The back seats are cramped. That's it. Simple. If you want space and comfort, you can save some money and buy a Sienta or a van. Some of you jokers think you're actually zipping around town in a vessel, or worse yet, an atrach. That's not zipping, that's hogging. This is zipping around town. I really don't know whose genius idea it was to stick all this on the car. Unfortunately, this car now suffers from vitiligo. Born in Germany, but made in Spain. Do you save 20k and get a Mazda 2? Or do you spend 20k or even 40k more and be a brand slave with a Polo or an A1? All I can say is, 
this car definitely lives up to its name as a hot hatch. And in my opinion, it strikes a balance that's perfect for Singapore.